And go ahead and turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. I know we, we acknowledged them just a few moments ago, but I would like to officially again welcome our online crowd. Uh, so thankful for you. I know that church is a little bit different for many people right now, but we're so thankful that we can be together. And uh, if you're just not ready to come out yet, we totally honor and respect that. We're thankful to be able to do service with you online, but there's nothing like being here. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. So if you are new to the area, maybe you don't have a home church, maybe you've never been to the Avenue Church and you're looking for a church, we'd love for you to come and be with us on Sundays at 9, 11, and 1. There's a place for you. You belong here. Come on, 11 o'clock. Make some noise for our online crowd today. Yes. Everyone who is with us online, make sure you're interacting there in the comments. Uh, we have some people that are going to be interacting with you throughout the message, so make some comments, and we'll be glad to interact with you. We're so thankful for you. Also, today is um, our first growth track session in our brand new um, area over here, It's and we're also not doing it at 9 o'clock. We're doing it at 1 o'clock. We're trying something new just because of everybody wanting to spread out, um, and so there may be some people over there right now enjoying service in our overflow areas, so everyone in overflow, we love you. I'm so thankful for you. Thankful that we do have a church that we can spread out. We have, we have roughly about 40,000 square feet now. We're able to, we have a brand new student auditorium, about 300 people can fit in there and overflow back behind us as well. And so if you're in overflow, whoop, whoop, we love you. Um, but today we're going to continue in our series um, called The Wave that we kicked off last week. Was anybody here last week? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> kicked off a brand new series just so we're all on the same page. Several months ago, the Lord spoke to me about a wave coming to our area, to our world. And, you know, in that moment, I'm thinking, awesome, a wave is coming. It's going to be amazing. I love the beach. It's going to be fabulous. But, you know, I had no idea that this is what he had in mind. A wave of his presence is here. And let me, let me, let me specify something. The wave of God is not the coronavirus. The wave of God is not the racial issues that we're dealing with. The wave of God is what he's doing through it all. Amen. So last week, last week we talked about the deep end and how God will help, how God has a plan and how God will not fail and how he's looking for some all in deep end believers. Anybody ready to go all in with what God has for their lives today? Amen. And so today, today we're going to Ephesians chapter five, just one verse. Somebody say one verse. Just one verse. I love how just one verse has so much power that can change your life. <clears throat> so Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 8. I need y'all's help today. Um, I, I, I'm dealing with the uh, Tennessee grass pollen in the area, um, and I cannot hear a thing. My, my, my head is just like, I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Whoa, 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 whoa. So y'all help me out. Um, y'all gonna help me preach, right? I don't like speaking to a boring crowd, and I know you don't like to listen to a boring preacher. I'll do my part if you'll do yours. All right? Where's my ameners? A little heavy on this side. We, we good over here? Okay, all right. So verse, verse 8 of chapter 5 in Ephesians says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. I love this. He says, Live as children of light. If you're taking notes, I've titled this message today. Write this down. Tidal wave. Somebody say tidal wave. Tidal wave. Father, we thank you for your presence and we thank you Lord for this moment to be right here God I thank you for every person that is here in this building and overflow areas and Lord those are with us online God I thank you that four walls don't limit what you can do and so Lord, we're grateful we're grateful today to be a part of the church that this isn't a right but Lord this is a privilege to be able to come to your house so thank you we worship you and Lord we open our open up the word and God we open our hearts to what you want to speak to us. Change us. Challenge us. God, we need to be better than what we are right now when we leave this place. So God, we surrender to you and your authority and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
tidal, tidal waves, tidal waves. This past, this past week, um, my daughter had a, a birthday party. Her birthday was actually about a week and a half ago, but just through circumstances and everything, we weren't able to have the official, we want to have an official party for her and, and have some friends over for her. And so she invited some friends over. This was past Tuesday evening. Um, Tuesday was one of the, the busiest days that I've experienced in a very long time. I think I made more phone calls on Tuesday than I ever have in the history of my life. Um, and you ever had one of those days? So I'm like, man, what in the world? Tuesday was the day that um, several of us pastors got together that we've been meeting together for several months now and, and uh, got together and, and formulated a Wednesday night prayer and worship service. How many of y'all were at the courthouse on Wednesday night? Make some noise if you were there with us. It was a great, great thing. Um, that happened in less than 24 hours. Um, so it was awesome what, what God did and the, the community coming together to pray and to worship together, not under the name of a particular church, but under the name of Jesus Christ, and that we are the church, and so it was a beautiful thing. But anyways, that, that all happened on Tuesday, and so phone calls were being made, it was, just, it was crazy, and in the meantime, my daughter had some friends over um, to, get, to do some swimming and stuff and for her birthday, and I was, you know, there's a lot of teenage girls at the house, and, and for a, 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 a parent, especially a dad, that's, that can be a little awkward, you know, so I'm like, I'm going to lay low, babe, and just like kind of do my thing and y'all need me just holler at me and all that kind of good stuff and, and so I'm in the living room making phone calls and and some some of the teenage girls come in and are talking to Melissa and it was it was kind of awkward because they were whispering and I'm thinking I, I probably need to go because I don't know what that conversation is looking like right now nor do I want to know and so I'm like do I need to step out and they're like no it's okay and I'm like I think I want to step out and so I stepped out for a minute, and, and uh, as I came back in, and, and I said, everything okay? And Melissa said, well, you, you may need to check the pool. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, well, just, just go check the pool in a few minutes. I'm like, oh, Jesus, help us. And, and so she's like, but I, I didn't need to see your phone real quick. And I'm like, hey, hey babe, I, I, I got lots of phone calls. Just kind of hurry up. Like, it was a perfect storm. They set me up. So I'm trying to be a good dad and a good person, a loving person. Didn't want to embarrass anybody because I didn't know what I was about to find in the pool. And so I go up there, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And these girls are like, come here, right here. And so as I walked up there, no phone in my pocket, this is what happens to me. Show that, show that picture. With my clothes on. <laughs> go ahead and show the next one. Yeah. Here I was trying to do the work of the Lord. <laughs> and I get set up by being thrown in the pool, causing a tidal wave, right? I know who you are. Courtney and Zoe, they may not be in here right now, but I give good comebacks and paybacks. And I'm telling you, paybacks are a whole lot worse than what was originally given. I looked him in the eye and I said, I promise you something. I will get you back. And I promise you I'll make sure it's the most inopportune, inconvenient time of your life that you will wish eternity is already here. And in that moment, there will be nothing you can say. And I'll just smile at you and go, it's coming for you. And my wife was part of it. It's coming for her. I know where she sleeps at night. She's always asleep before I am. It's going to happen. Just wait. Tidal waves, tidal waves. With everything going on in our world, I want you to see something. For that to take place on Tuesday, everything had to line up just right for it to happen. And, and every person had to work together for it to happen. So somebody say line up. Somebody say together. Things had to line up just right for that to happen, and people had to work together to pull it off. So with everything going on in our world, I want to talk today about what we can do to be a part of what God wants to do with his way. How we can be a part of what God wants to do with his way. Listen, our world needs a tidal wave of God's power and his presence and his healing. Can I get a big amen? amen? And I don't know if you know this or not, but we play a part in the wave. We have a role in creating a tidal wave. So today, if you're taking notes, I hope you are young people, kids, or some, there's some uh, papers out that you can take notes. If you fill those out, you can get a prize after service. So we're trying to, trying to do everything we can to stay with you and your parents. So three things that we must do for the wave to have an impact on our lives. Number one is this. We as a church and as believers, we've got to believe for the impossible again. 
We've got to believe for the impossible. How will God ever bring healing to our world? How could God ever fix the issues in our world? And how could God ever help with my personal issues? All valid questions. All valid questions. Can we, can we go a little deep today? I'm hesitant on sometimes on going deep because I never want to lose people. But can we go there a little bit today? Is that all right? So in Genesis chapter 1, I think they had that in the back. They can throw it up there. Genesis chapter 1, I want to read verses 1 through 5 and verses 14 through 19. Very first scripture of the entire Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Check it. And there was evening, and there was morning on the first day. Now, can we skip to verse 14? It says, God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the great, greater light to govern the day called the sun and the lesser light to govern the night called the moon. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning on the fourth day. Now, I don't know if that rocks your world like it rocks my world, but if you read that, you go, what? Like, how in the world is that possible? Because in the beginning, on the first day, God created light, and there was evening, and there was morning on the first day. But it wasn't until day four that God created two objects to attach the light to. That's not possible. No, in your, in your mindset, it's not possible. And according to our patterns, it's not possible. But God doesn't work according to our patterns. So God creates light on the first day, and then he waits until day four to create two objects to attach the light to. This fires me up. Are you with me, church? This should let you know that God doesn't work according to our patterns and God doesn't work according to our plans, but rather God specializes in impossible situations. And I'll be honest with you, from the human eye and human understanding, it looks like we're standing in the middle of some problems that seem too big for anyone to fix. Oh, but here's what I need you to see today. God started this world on a miracle and he'll finish this world on a miracle. In other words, he specializes in making the impossible Possible, possible. In fact, when you face an impossible situation in your life, you've just made yourself a perfect candidate for a miracle. And I've come to tell somebody today who wants to be a part of a tidal wave, it's time that we start believing that with God all things are possible. You want to make a splash? You want to create a tidal wave? Then start believing for the impossible. Newsflash, the coronavirus is no match for our God. Newsflash, newsflash, racism is no match for our God. Newsflash, your personal issues are no match for our God. That depression will fail. That sickness will fail. That loneliness will fail. That brokenness will fail. Oh, come on, Avenue. Either we are faith-filled, take the limits off unusual believers, or we're not. Oh, but God is looking for a church who will believe again. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or even imagine our our world needs people who will believe. Our world needs believers to rise up. And one of the greatest things that we can do for our world today is to never stop believing for the impossible. Oh, I hope I'm in the right place today. If you believe that there's absolutely nothing too hard for our God, I wish you'd stand up on your feet and just begin to praise God all because he's able, all because he's good. Oh, it's a praise break in advance because you know that a miracle is on the way. Believe for the impossible. Woo! Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In the words of Journey, somebody shout, don't stop believing. <laughs> Some of y'all young people don't know nothing about that. In fact, right there online, why don't you just type in, don't stop believing, don't stop believing. Is this okay? Yeah. Don't stop believing. 
believe for the impossible. Now catch this. If we do believe, then we will act. Why? Because faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So, number two, if we believe, we've got to act. So we've got to, number two, get in the right position. Somebody say position. Position. Verse 8, for you were once darkness, but now you were light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Somebody say light. Somebody say position. So something about tidal waves. I don't know if you know this or not. Just a little bit of a scientific lesson here. Tidal waves are not just created because there's deep parts of the earth and then there's land. Tidal waves are actually created because of the gravitational pull of the sun and the gravitational pull of the moon. Teachers, if I'm right, say amen. You don't know. Okay. You're trusting me on it. All right. <laughs> but here's the thing. The strongest tidal waves occur when the sun is in perfect alignment with the moon. Perfect alignment. So check this. Tidal waves have everything to do with position. Come on, somebody say position. I brought this mirror on stage with me today to make a point here. Some of y'all are right in the light of that. I want you to go ahead and go to that setting with just that one light. Yeah. Now I can blind some of y'all out. This mirror right here is simply, is this mirror the one giving the light? No. It's simply reflecting the light. And because I position it in a such a way to receive that light, I can then project that light wherever I want it to go. All because of its position. Somebody say position. But if I remove this mirror from the right position, the effectiveness of that light is no longer good. I barely have a light. See, the problem with many of us is that we've just moved out of position. But if I will position myself in the right place at the right time, I will create the biggest light. You can go ahead and change the lights things so we don't blind everybody. I don't know if you know this or not, but the moon does not give out any light. It only reflects the light of the sun. I know some of y'all are like, what? Now keep going with me here. Our world seems very dark right now. But light shines the brightest in the dark. And now is the time for the church to shine. Now is not the time to run and hide and be silent in our world. Now is the time to be the church and bring light to darkness. Can I get a big amen? If you'll bring up Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world. Can I say it again? You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now get this, working with this tidal wave theme, since I'm supposed to reflect the light, that makes me a moon. Look at your neighbor and say, you are nothing but a moon. You are a moon. Come on, I read it to you in Genesis chapter 1. God created the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. Oh, I hope you're seeing this today. You are a moon called to reflect the sun, and you've been given the authority to rule the night. All because of who you're supposed to be reflecting. You've been created to rule over darkness. Oh, that's a word for somebody who's lowered your head in defeat because of what's going on in your life. I've come to tell you that darkness has no authority over you. Sickness has no authority over you. Depression and fear and anxiety and addiction and any other assignment against your life from the pit of hell has no authority over you. Oh, hear me, church. Weapons may be formed against you. But those weapons will fail because of who's for you. For greater is Christ that is in you than the darkness that's in the world. Come on, somebody shout, I'm a moon. 
I'm a moon. I'm a moon. Now you're supposed to be reflecting the light of the sun, right? Right? Reflecting the light of the sun. But watch this. You can't do that if you're not positioned right. And as believers, you're supposed to be the light to the world. But the question is, what and who are you reflecting? The moon is the lesser light. And since you've been called to only reflect light, people don't need to see you. I wish I had about 10 extra more minutes. I would park it right there and I would talk about how it ain't about you. People don't need to see you. People need to see Jesus. They need to see the light of Jesus in you. They don't need your, your grandstanding. They don't need your puffed up chest. They don't need to see your arrogance. They don't need to see, oh, I'm good at this and I'm good at that. They don't need to see your posts that are selfish and arrogant and prideful and rude. They need to see Jesus in you. <laughs> Put it in drive. But I need you to see this right here. When the moon is positioned just right with the sun, that's when the biggest tidal waves are produced. So if Jesus is the sun, and if we are the moon, oh, I'm about to preach this thing today. The reason why some of you are missing God's blessings and the reason why some of you are struggling in the dark is because you're not in the right position. You made the very easy mistake of thinking that this life is all about you, but it's not. It's about what God can do through you. But if you're in the wrong position, don't ever expect to experience the blessings of God. Can you go to that light setting again? Somebody say position. I'm supposed to be here, but now I've moved the position here where the light isn't hitting. And this is, this is the problem with the capital C church today. I'm not just talking about the avenue. I'm talking about the church today. And yes, I am talking about some people in here. This, this, this is the problem with believers and people in the church today. God here I am. Why aren't you blessing me? I've showed up today. Why aren't you blessing me? I need you to do this in my life. Is there something wrong with you, God? Why aren't you hearing me? Go ahead and flip that light. Newsflash. There's nothing wrong with God. You're just out of position. Look at someone and tell them, check your position. Check your position. Check your position. If a church is not shining in the middle of darkness, the church has just moved out of position. If a believer is not shining in the middle of darkness, that believer has just moved out of position. Oh, can I preach this thing like I need to today? Who do we think we are to think that God is supposed to find us, to bless us when we're living in our own selfishness, in our own comfort, so we'll put our sports in front of God and in front of the church and then get mad when our family falls apart? We'll spend all of our money on selfish things but skip the tithe and then get frustrated when we can't make the bills meet. We'll continue to have sex outside of marriage and then wonder why the relationship is never fulfilling. We'll hit the club on the weekend and then wonder why church just isn't doing it for you on Sunday anymore. We won't pray, we won't fast, we won't read the Bible, and then we wonder why God seems so distant from us. We won't sacrifice anything or give anything up for the Lord, and then wonder why God doesn't give us everything that we desire. We'll hang on to bitterness and resentment towards people, and then wonder why we're miserable and frustrated. We'll hide secret sins in our lives and put on a fake mask on Sunday, but then wonder why God can't really bless us. We'll hold on to racism in our nation, and then wonder why there's so many problems in our society and why there's so much social injustice and no unity. Hey, church, we're out of position. Get this, church. 
It's the position of our hearts that will release the blessings from heaven. Can I say it again? It's the position of our hearts that will release the blessings from heaven. Oh, but if we'll seek after God, if we'll go in search of God, if we'll get real about the sin in our lives, if we'll lay down the pride, if we'll get our priorities in order, if we'll hit our knees and repent, if we'll recognize that we're nothing without him, if we'll position ourselves in such a way that light can shine through us and we'll be a reflection of who he is we'll create the biggest tidal waves you'll receive the biggest blessings you'll make the biggest differences hey you'll witness the greatest of miracles oh i wish i could find some avenue people up in here today who's ready for a move of god who's ready to see a wave of god's glory hit your life and hit this church and hit our nation oh why don't you take a moment and position yourself somebody praise him somebody worship him him. Somebody cry out to Jesus and help me lift high his name today. Check your position. Oh, your position is on your knees in prayer. Your position is in praise and worship. You're doing the same thing the 9 o'clock service did. I don't know why you're sitting down yet. Your position is when you lift up those hands and you give God praise. Your position is in the church. Check your position. Oh, I think that's a great place to spend about the next 15 to 20 seconds and just give God the biggest ovation of praise. You've given him all day long. Get in position. Woo! I need you to air high five three people and tell them, check your position. Check your position. Somebody shout, check your position. In fact, online, why don't you just type in the comments, check your position. Is this okay? Thank you, Jesus. Your position is right here. Your position is in prayer. Your position is to reflect. Your position has nothing to do with... Me or you, it's about reflecting Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm pausing right here for a reason because I'm not trying to build an emotional hype, but I just feel like somebody who hasn't really given God a praise in a while, that the Holy Spirit is just stopping to let you give God a praise for a minute. I don't, I don't know who that's for, maybe for several of you, but maybe you just haven't given God praise in a while. Hey, there's freedom in this house to worship. <laughs> Oh, if you're thankful that, that God has spared you, if you're just thankful that, that God's given you grace and mercy, if you're thankful for who Jesus is, if you're thankful that you've got a church to go to and, and you've got life in your lungs and, and breath in your lungs and food on your table and, and you've been blessed just to be able to wake up today to come to church. If you, if you had the lights on at your house, if you got a bed to sleep in, if you've got a job to pay the bills, come on. Somebody who needs to give God praise for his unmerited favor, that you didn't deserve it, but God blessed you anyways. Oh, come on, that's a good place to give a God a praise. Get in position. It's in moments like this, like I wish I had an organ, where it was like, I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna pray. Bum, 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 bum. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, I gotta praise. That's, that's kind of what happens in my head. I'm like, <laughs> hashtag, I'm just serious. Believe for the impossible. Get in the right position. Here's the third one. I'm done. We've got to be agents of unity, not division. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So live as children of light. Jason, will you, will you join me again, my man? Will you get that mic? For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Hey, church, for there to be a tidal wave, things have to be working together. I told you that in the very beginning. 
The sun and the moon have to be working together. Who is the sun? About 15 of y'all know that. Who is the sun? Who are the moons? Yes, as believers, as believers and people in Christ, as the church, we've got to start working together. Psalm 133, 1 and 3 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Somebody say unity. unity. Can I just, I want to emphasize right there. Nowhere, nowhere in the scripture do I ever read how good and pleasant it is when white people live together in unity. I don't see anywhere in scripture where it says how good and pleasant it is when God's black people live together in unity. It says when God's people. Verse 3 says, it's as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows. The New King James translation says, for there the Lord commands his blessings. I don't know about you, but I want to live my life in such a way that God has to command his blessings upon our lives. Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Amen. He then says, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. He also said, we must learn to live together as brothers or die together as fools. I read a, I read a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. This, this past week that really broke my heart. It was a simple statement that said, I long to live in a nation where I can be a white man's brother and not his brother-in-law. I asked Jason just to sit down with me just for a moment just to address the issue. Um, I was talking to him before service that I just want to ask him a question in a minute, but just want to have a small talk just for a moment. I love this guy right here. I love you too, brother. I, re I remember the first time I met Jason was on Easter Sunday at, at Walter State. Yeah, boy. <laughs> 2017. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll never forget it, man. Yeah. I remember because uh, I'm just going to be real. I remember the first time a black person walked into our church. It was on a Wednesday night. Her name was Leah Davis. And look, Leah hadn't been here at the 9 o'clock service or the 11. She better be here at the 1 o'clock service. I know that's right. <laughs> but I'll never forget that Sunday because I was talking to some people this past week. If, if I remember right, and I, and I, could, I could be wrong, but... I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure you're the first black man to walk in our doors. Maybe, may not. I know I was the darkest. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it, like, just, just being honest with you, like, I remember in that, in that moment I was going to go introduce myself, and, and, and the thought rolled in my mind, man, I hope you don't think I'm coming to introduce myself because I recognize it hits his first time because I, I mean, I, you're black. I know if another black man walked into our right. church. <laughs> and so like, it'd be crazy for me to go, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you was black. I didn't know. <laughs> Just like you look at me and say, well, I didn't know you was white. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> right, right. It's, well, I never, never felt like you approached me just. Good. Cause I was thinking that, Lord, I'd please don't let him think I'm just like, Oh, you're just talking because I'm the only black man in here right now. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> but one thing I learned real quick is about Jason is that he's a Florida Gators fan. Ain't, ain't nobody asked you? <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking, and um, I'm an Auburn fan. Always There's always one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I, I'm sure you've met some obnoxious rude Auburn fans yes yeah just like just like I have met some obnoxious rude Florida fans 
I've also met some really obnoxious Tennessee fans. Oh yeah, that's and I and I have really oh. one just showed themselves. Really <laughs> met some obnoxious <laughs> Alabama fans. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, because I may have one bad encounter with some fan, we're we're the worst at it. Stereotyping people yeah. like we'll have one bad encounter with one type of fan and go, oh, I hate Tennessee fans or mm-hmm. I hate Alabama fans, and we do that with everything. Yeah. We do it with restaurants. We'll go we'll go to I, I, we'll go to a, I don't know a Texas Roadhouse and, and have a bad experience with a, a server or whatever or, or what a food or I don't know whatever it is and go, oh, I hate I hate Texas Roadhouses, and it was just one right. instant. We, we're, we're doing it in this situation in our world. Yes, yes. One, one bad cop has now caused everybody to think, oh, all cops are that way. Right. And that ain't true. That's right. You're right. I'm so thankful for our cops that stand up for truth and justice Amen. and lay their lives down for us. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. And it would be like, it would be, it'd be like Jason having a bad encounter, and I know you have, a bad encounter with a white person and go, I can't stand white people. Mm-hmm. It'd be like me having a bad encounter with a black person and say, I can't stand black people. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yes, you're right. And so I, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring Jason up here. Yes, one, duh, because he's black. One, but two, because I love this man and I would I'll fight with him fight for him this is my brother and I, and I asked this question in the 9 o'clock service and I know it can be a very emotional question to ask but how are you feeling through all of this man um it was when you asked me at nine it, it it made me reflect back on things that i've experienced as a black man as, as a youth and as an adult um, but also I, I know that if we are able to love each other and one another we wouldn't be going through this obviously and and like i said in 11 o'clock don't allow someone's one person that has caused some turmoil in your life or made you want to hate another race or another person or another group of people just because that one person done that. Don't allow that. That's nothing but the enemy trying to divide you. Don't allow that to happen. But me, me personally, I just, I, I hope that the nation opens their eyes to see that it's, it's really not about black and white. It's about treating people equally. And I, I thank that you for this opportunity that you have taken to bring this issue out because it needs to be talked about. It's not something that needs to be swept under the rug any longer. Um, man, it, it's great that... <laughs> thank you, we love you too. You know, I love, I loved, we love to cut up with each other, you know, and I have, I have many black friends. I love to cut up with each other and have a good time. Just life, you know, like, right. and, and call it ignorance or just, I didn't, I didn't know. Like, I really didn't know. I mean, I don't know why I didn't know. I guess stupidity. I don't know. I really didn't know, but I was having dinner with Reggie and London Royal this past week. Some of y'all remember them from coming down in February for our marriage conference. And we're just talking, you know, and. And he was just, I was just letting him talk because I wanted to hear. I, want, I wanted to hear. Um, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Right, we'll do right, more listening right. than talking. And I just said, man, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. And I don't know how the conversation got here. But he started talking about the type of foods that his family and you know, the black community is, I don't know if you want to say known for or just in conversation. We've talked like, you know, you know the, the pig feet and all these different other body parts were like, I, I can't go for that and, and all this stuff and and throughout my life it's always been just like a, a topic of just fun, just funny you know what I mean right right and I didn't know man like I didn't know and ignorance I don't know just not putting two two together I don't know he he said you know why right and I'm like man I don't please forgive me for not knowing he says because when we were slaves that's all we were allowed to have right yeah 
It got me, dude. It got me because man, if I had water right now in a towel, I'd wash your feet. I, I, I told you this already, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry for every time a white person has ever looked at you, treated you differently than who you are. You are a man of God, and you are my brother. And I ask you, forgive me. Well, and let me say this, as a black man, as a black man, let me apologize for moments where I hated you. Deserve it. Let me let me apologize for moments where I felt like I was behind in the race. I was five steps behind in the race when you were ahead. But I also know that God put me in a position that a white man gave me an opportunity to come here to get my education, to get my degree. And it's only because of the grace of God and me loving people and being able to remove that hate from my heart that allows me to be in the position that I am in today. So thank you to all the people that have helped me in my life. I really appreciate you. And it's whether it's black, white, Latino, Asian, whoever, all people, I, I really appreciate it because again, I wouldn't be in this position if I didn't see all colors. The wave is not the racial issue. The wave is what God is doing through it. Amen. Amen. And God is exposing it to bring unity and healing to our nation. And the enemy knows the power of unity. Amen. And when God's people get unified, there's no limit to what God can do. It really makes no sense. It makes, it makes no sense. When you think that someone's been judged not on the content of their character but the color of their skin it makes no sense yeah, and just to bring a little humor but in all seriousness like white people work all year long to get darker <laughs> i used to say i used to say this i don't understand I, you can ask the engine i used to say i don't know why you're getting any dark because it ain't done me no good <laughs> It don't make any sense. Like, I've been having conversations with my kids this week, and th there are some there's some black people in this church that I am darker than. But when people look at me, they see a white man. But that same person goes out in public, they see a black person. That doesn't make any sense. We we racism. You are not born being a racist. Right. Right. It's learned. Yeah, and right. we've got some you're unlearning right. to do in our nation. Yeah. We've got to learn how to love again. We've got to learn to know what's right and what's wrong and stand for the word of God. <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. Hey, we're in this together. <laughs> it makes no sense, guys. We're better than this. We're better than this. I know this. I'm a better man because of this man. And I hope that I can help make him a better man. And that's got nothing to do with whether he's black and I'm white. It's because when he gave his life to Christ and I gave my life to Christ, the DNA of Jesus now flows in our veins. So we are family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the main messages that will always be a part of this church we are stronger together John 13 34 and 35 Jesus said a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another 
By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Avenue Church will be a place of love, but never hatred. We'll be a place of unity, but never division. We'll be a place of reconciliation, but never a place that tolerates racism. We'll be a church for black people, a church for white people, a church for Hispanic people, a place for people to experience the real presence of God. The Avenue will always be a church that looks like heaven, a place where we can come together because together we can rise up and bring light to the dark world. Together we can give the world Jesus. You want to make a tidal wave? Live as children of light. Oh, come on, Avenue. If you'll help us be agents of unity and not division, if you're not already, why don't you stand up all over this house and can we sing this song together in unity that we sang a few moments ago? Come on, all together. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Come on, sing it out, sing it out. Come on, one more time. Just the voices. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade. Darkness will break. I'll keep on singing your praise. <laughs> God, forgive us. Forgive us that it's taken this for us to come together. Forgive us of all the times that there has been hatred amongst blacks, whites, Hispanics, all different races. Forgive us. But God, now is the time for it to end and we repent. We repent. And Lord, will you please bring healing. Restore hope. Restore hope and trust in each other. That what the enemy meant for evil God, will you flip it for our good to unite the body of Christ stronger than ever in Jesus' name. Hey, Avenue, I challenge you with something. Every person here, I challenge you. I challenge white people to invite a black family to dinner with you 
black people, I challenge you to reach out and invite a white family to dinner with you and be intentional about it. It don't just happen. You've got to be intentional about it. Somebody said to me, it's like, well, how do I do this without it being awkward or uncomfortable or like I'm coming across as superficial or fake? No, 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 no. We just got to hit it. We just got to go right at it and be intentional. Unity doesn't just happen. We got to be intentional. And so I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to reach out. Next couple of weeks, make plans and do dinner with each other. His family, come over to my house today. We're going to hang out together and do life together. Break bread together. What? I hope we're going to have some meat. But if nobody else wants to change, this house is going to change. This house is going to bring some change. We're going to stand together. Amen? Come on, if you want to be agents of unity and not division, will you just lift up those hands? Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. I thank you, Lord, for every person. And God, we ask that you would unite us. Unite us, God. Bring us into unity. Help us to be intentional about creating that, Lord, to have dialogue and get on the same level again. Realize that we are your children. And together, 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 we can make a difference. Together, we can make a change. And together, we can create a tidal wave working with one another and working with you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed, even those who are with us online today. I'm asking every person here to check your position because I would venture to say that there's somebody or somebodies that are here that you're not in the right position with God. And that that you'll never receive the blessings of heaven unless you've gotten yourself in position. What do I mean by that? You'll never experience eternity in heaven if you've not given your life to Jesus. Or maybe you're here today and you've stepped out of position and today you need to rededicate your life and get back in position. I'm gonna count to three. And if that's you, I just want you to lift that hand right where you're standing. I'm not gonna call you out, embarrass you. pray with you right where you're standing but maybe you're not in position right now in this moment you need to get in position eternity is very real heaven is very real and hell is very real it's all based on your position one come on if that's you on the count of three just lift up that hand there's already one thank you brother come on two there's another one yeah thank you come on three lift up that hand thank you thank you thank you anybody else those of you who are with us online, thank you. I see you. Yes. Several hands. Those of you who lifted that hand, I want you to pray this with me from your heart and from your mouth. Abney, let's join in. Those of you with us online, pray this with me. I want you to say, dear Jesus, I need you. I'm lost without you. And I believe in you. And I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. I'm checking my position, getting in line with you. Forgive me of my sins. And from this day forward, when problems come, I won't get out of position, but I'll stay with you because you love me. You're my savior and you've got an amazing plan for my life. In Jesus name, come on 11 o'clock service. Can we give God a big praise right there? Come on, somebody give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Hey, yes. God is so good. And if you are watching online or you're in this room and you made a decision or maybe you're in an overflow area or in our student auditorium, we want you to know that we love you and we're celebrating the most important decision that you've ever made in your whole life. And we want to walk this thing out with you. This is just the beginning of a brand new start.